go up the steps when I'm going live. So you better go up quick if you want to go. Otherwise, wait 10 minutes. Tony Dottino here. And still uh, in New York, uh, Larchmont, New York, as uh, Evelyn's next doctor's appointment is on Friday. And we'll take it from there as to what the doc recommends. But we've had 95% success, and uh, he wants to get it to 105. So and we're here to support that. And I will continue to do my live with Tony's. As you may see from the bookshelf behind me, this has been my library. I've had those shelves, three shelves stacked with books that I've read throughout my whole life of consulting on the human brain. When back in 19, God, it's going to go back to 1979 when I first got to meet uh, Tony Buzan and going through the early 80s with learning about the human mind and then in 1989, uh, really got into this memory, brain, function stuff, and creativity in a full way. So I'm almost uh, interesting to say this is like 50 years. It's been like, wow. And what's been interesting in the books and the science, uh, the research that's been done, is what we continue to learn about the potential of the human mind and its cap capacities. I was one of these people that always thought, gee, I didn't have a good memory, I wasn't very creative, uh, worried about <clears throat> using up too much of my brain, you know, obviously before I was going to die, I was worried about not putting too much in it, you know, all kinds of silly things that we could laugh at today that I look at and say, how could I have ever thought that? And what's been amazing to me over the last uh, 24 years of running the USA Memory Championship and hosting people from all over the country to be a part of it is how many people have that same concern, meaning, my goodness, how much memory storage do I have? And can I really do anything to change or improve my memory? Do I have the ability to build cognitive reserves or mental reserves in my brain? And so I find it loving and amusing to the fact that these were thoughts that I had in my life at one point in time. And I actually believed in this stuff until I met with Tony Buzan at a seminar and basically convinced me there was hope for me. And so that emotional connection with him and the messaging he gave me at that time has stuck with me forever. And what I want to make sure I can do is return that gift that he gave to me to as many people as I can through the USA Memory Chain or through interviews or classes or workshops or Zoom broadcasts or, or uh, YouTubes or however I can get it out to the world to get people to realize there is so much more that you can do with your memory, your brain, your creativity than we ever scientifically thought possible, at least in the time that I was going through school and, and middle adult life. And so here comes this Massachusetts General Mind, Mood, and Memory. So it's Mind, Mood, and Memory, and starts talking about memory and thinking skill concerns. And it could be subjective uh, in terms of our cognitive decline and how doctors are going about doing what they're doing. And so uh, this is the information that continues to come about that I think is extremely important. And it's important for people to know it. So some self-reported memory problems may not be diagnosable, diagnosable yep, changes in cognition, but they affect your quality of life. And so it's important for us to understand that which we can do to improve our memories. So when we designed the Maximum Memory Mastery online course, we were very careful to make sure we would give people what we call a pre test, and I don't want to put that as a test that you fail or flunk, but a pre-test to get a, be a benchmark. We wanted to give you a benchmark of where you would start and how that start would be, would change based on the, the, the skills that we taught, taught you, the memory techniques, and then have you do a post. So you had a chance to say, here's where I am today if I did nothing. Here's where I'm going to learn something about how I can make a difference, and then here's how I will make improvements to it and prove it by seeing the results. And there's nothing better than I've seen in people in what they believe than seeing where they started and then getting something simple that they can quickly learn and not have to go you know, to eight hours of training for it, five to 15 minutes, 
and then apply it and see their results and benefits that then light them up and give them the belief and the confidence and the trust that they can actually do something to make an, a, an improvement in their own cognitive reserves. So in this particular article, it's talks about understanding your cognitive changes. And so by understanding what some fundamentals are and what you might be able to do to make changes to it and the techniques that produce immediate short results helps you with that understanding of your change and what you're capable of doing, which then brings you to the stages of, of memory where you're willing to put some time into it because you know they work and you see the results. There's nothing more than today having the pleasure of being on our Zoom call as we're preparing for our 24th memory championship than having Nelson Dellis, who's a our only five-time winner, on a Zoom call that we have with Lamosity and uh, our memory team for this year's competition, then seeing Nelson and seeing the changes and the differences that this has made in his life as living proof of someone who initially came to this and it has so altered his life. And I say, if Nelson never thought he could do it but then subsequently learned and decided to, and Nelson would be the first person to tell you that anyone can do this. I, I, you know, he wasn't thinking of himself as the most brilliant mind in the whole world, but boy, he sure as hell is now, and is amazing. Uh, I was talking with Jim Carroll, another dear friend and colleague of mine, and some of the things that he's been able to do with beginning to learn how to improve his memory and beginning to practice as he was going through a medical issue in his life uh, in his 40s. And what he started to do in terms of practicing memory skills and techniques and where he is today is like night and day. The man is changing lives of people that he interacts with. He's working with military folks with post-traumatic stress and he's working with autistic. He, he, I mean, he's worked with so many different people and he has proven to themselves. He's helped show them how to prove to themselves what a difference that they can make by learning how to tap into this infinite potential that we have in our brains that we can call the brain power, memory, creativity, you name it, what you want to do. So the first thing that I always want people to get is it talks about here advocating for yourself. If you monitor over time your symptoms or whatever you, you are looking at, you can consider the, the neurogenerative uh, process uh, each of us have got our own self-talk that we have. So when you're talking about advocate for yourself, if when we look at our own life and we forget something, uh, right, senior moment. Now, if you're senior, you can do that. Don't, some people belabor that even when they're younger. It's not a senior moment. You know, what I say to people, have you taken the time to focus on something that you're trying to remember? So one of the first things we do in the Maximum Memory Mastery course is we take people through some of the basic biology of what, what memory is and how it works and what your brain is potentially capable of doing. And therefore, we want to get people on solid footing and solid foundations to understanding a bit about their axons and dendrites and neurons and how the, the chemistry comes together and creates this amazing mass of thinking that we have. And so when this article talks about memory and thinking skills, we want people to be in the, in the positive energy of synergy, synergy of thought, that helps them to build thinking skills that give them the confidence and trust that they can do this. And there is nothing more than having people with that passion and that belief of that they can do. Now what can they do? They can in, learn some skills and techniques to improve their memory. And I hear so many doctors telling me, but God, Tony, so many people just want, give me a pill. And you do see lots of companies advertising, take this pill and you're going to be wonderful. Now, who wouldn't love to have, as doctors call it, the easy pill? Hey, take this at night, you wake up in the morning and you're brilliant. Who wouldn't, I'd sign up for that if I believed in it. But one of the things I learned from Tony Buzan years ago, and it was a gift that he taught me at a really important stage in my life is 
let other people be the, the lab experiments for those easy pills and let them be the study of what happens as they begin to chemistry or uh, physiologically uh, change the order of their brain structure. And let's see what happens 20 years later to those people. But in the meantime, why don't you learn some basic fundamentals and learn some fundamental skills of how you can do it without ingesting any, anything into your body. It may be harmful, it may not be, but let's see if we can eliminate the need to ingest anything and see what those results are. And that's what I subscribe to, that's what I bought into, and that's what got me so interested in saying, okay, so what are some things that I could learn to improve my memory without worrying about what ingestions I was going to make into my body? And so we have that offering. If you go to the USA Memory Championship website, you get to see people with testimonials that have shown through practice, through training and education, and then the willingness to do so, practice, uh, they've made a big difference in their memories. And wow, it's a pleasure every year to see new people come to this that said, man, I believe, right? I now, I think I can do this and I'm willing to at least put my brain on display and show people that there are things that I've been able to improve that uh, make me a mental athlete that is eligible to compete in the USA Memory Championship. So with that, off we go. Uh, I should be able to get back on Friday. If not, I'll figure out you know, how to maybe get on Saturday. But fr Friday's a busy day on the calendar, uh, but let's see how it works out. And uh, we'll keep going. Uh, I love doing what I do, and I want to make a difference in each person that I get to touch so that they too can believe that there's so much more that they can do up here than they ever thought possible. Have a good afternoon and evening, and hope you're not in a snow belt and you're not shoveling snow. I'm looking forward to when I can get back to Florida and get back into the swimming pool and start doing my laps uh, every other day. <laughs>